Hey, what up, guys? Welcome to the next episode in the Golf Perfection Podcast. I'm joined here with Matt, my co-host. We are in the golf garage in San Jose. Uh, if you are in the South Bay, come on in and get your game dialed. So today's topic, we're going to talk about you know getting into golf, when you should get your first lesson, and then what kind of to expect uh, when you're getting your first lesson. So let's talk about... Uh, the first topic like when in your opinion and i also have an opinion on this too so we might we might conflict or whatever but in your opinion when should someone who wants to get into the golf get their first lesson um if they if they if they have that love and that want to learn then i say get one pretty quickly right okay. because it's easier to create habits than to break them okay right sure. so if you are you play golf for seven years and you have the same bad habits, it's harder for me to break that down and change it versus somebody who just picks up the club, has no idea of what they're doing, and mm. then I can mold that into something a little bit quicker. And then, too, the overall enjoyment of the game, if you kind of have an, a general understanding of what needs to happen. And that, I think that's one of the things in, in my teaching that I've come to – just my approach to it, uh, being doing it so long, is I want you to understand conceptually what we're doing and why it works. Right? Mm, okay. I've, I've been okay. to I've been to instructors in the past that told me to put my elbow somewhere for an hour straight. Elbow needs to be here. Knee, <laughs> knee needs to be here. But I'm like, what? But, but what? Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and if when you... I'm in the lesson, it works. Right? But then I I'm not in the lesson. I go out and play, and I think my elbow's in that position, and it doesn't go right, and now I'm just lost. God, right. God. So if I can kind of give you an idea of here's what needs to happen, you can make a ton of mistakes and still make it somewhat happen. And you I can you, it can be enjoyable and you're, you're still hitting it down the fairway. It may not be perfect, but it's enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, then someone who's first starting out, are the things would it make sense to try to maybe get some kind of like because like for me, if I told someone to get a lesson right away without ever taking them to a range, then they're coming into a lesson and they can't do the same thing twice over and over. So maybe should they get some motor well, function behind it? And, or the, and that's they... with that, that enjoyment of it. If you're going out to the range and you hit golf balls and you hit, you know, out of a bucket, you hit three and you hear that ball speed come off. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was a fluke, but you did it and you're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I want to learn how to do that. I want to do this more. That's I think that's most in, most enjoyable. Right? No, I think that's the good time. You want to be able to get out there and just kind of check it out for yourself because you're going to find some people are more of athletes or have like any sort of rotational move background, mm. tennis, mm -hmm. soccer. Baseball, you know, there's a lot of yeah. people that always tell me that I can't play golf because I have a baseball swing. And there's so <laughs> many similarities. There's so many similarities oh, yeah. to it, right? And once they understand that, they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. God. So I think... It's safe to say then, like, before you maybe consider booking a lesson, just go out there, see if it's something that you'll actually enjoy. And then maybe when you feel like you want to get a little better because you have that, you know, one or two really good swings that, like, you see the ball fly, then maybe consider consider lessons. Um, would you say that's more of a better I, statement? Or? I, I think that's a good statement. And as well, I'm going to add to that is, like, the length in between lessons. Okay. Right? The ability to take a lesson in if you can't get to the range five times with five good one hour sessions before you come and see me next i don't want to see you because mm, yeah. i feel bad about charging you 130 dollars <laughs> for the hour to tell you the same thing i told you last week yeah. because you still don't have that down yet mm. right so you have to have an understanding of what we went over before then we can kind of add to it right we've built our foundation and we're going to kind of keep stacking those blocks up now if you're a beginner and the first lesson is you know putting and the second lesson is wed you know chipping and then you move forward yeah come in you can come in doesn't matter every two days for that yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you're working on the same thing you need to have a certain amount of practice right because it's going to take you a thousand balls to break a habit God, right God. and that's what people don't understand is like look if you could learn how to play this game in an hour there'd be a line around the corner <laughs> and everybody would be doing it yeah I, I agree so i think the the message there is like yeah sure you know get some excitement behind it but then I think what a lot of people know who are just starting this game, it takes a lot of time and practice to even kind of get along on the course. You know, like 
it, it's it's a tough game. I mean, look at some of the best athletes in the world and how they struggle with this game. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, it, yeah. It is. It's you know, you're 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 hitting something that's not moving, right? And it's very <laughs> small, you know. And and the difference of one degree open or close for every hundred yards. I mean, it's it's. You can make mistakes in a hurry, but oh, if yeah. we if we simplify it and say, hey, hit the goal that hit the ball that way, and if I can hit it again, it's a great shot. Got it. Yeah, because you know, coming to you know another similar topic is that I have a friend who started golf. You know, he's a pandemic golfer. Just right when it started, we took him to the range, and he was swinging quite a bit. Like he has the drive, he has the spark, and you've probably seen him on the channel uh, in, in some of the uh, the blogs there. James and he he's pretty athletic uh you know he has really good hand-eye coordination so he was able to get away for quite a while without coming in I kept bugging him you know come to the golf garage so yeah and as soon as he took his first lesson like he had some ideas like on the YouTube videos and Instagram videos of kind of what to do but it wasn't until he started feeling what he needed to do by your instruction that he kind of understood where he needs to get to he he kind of which could go to another topic he kind of is in a slump right now and i've been trying to nag him to get back in but you know that 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 was to me you know a sign for him to get in there as soon as he started plateauing so um that's kind of you know seeing before my very eyes a beginner get into the game what what i see you know is people who come in they'll take a few lessons but there's so much on social media now mm. that it can sometimes lead you down a rabbit hole that you don't need to go down because it sure. may be a different system than what is being taught to you, right? There's a lot of great information out there. You just need to understand how to kind of kind of make your way through it and pick what aligns with what your coach is trying to, to, to do, yeah. right? Um, you know, because I'll have people come in and be like, we worked for six straight weeks on getting something done. And they're like, well, I watched this video on YouTube and now I'm trying to do this, right? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you just took us three weeks backwards, but let's get back on the horse and, and do it again. Got right? it, got it. So, yeah, like that being said, like, do you think – and this may be controversial, but do you think it's it, it more more helpful or more hurtful that all of this is available? I, I think all it's helpful because you're getting different people's viewpoints on on what they do. And again, mechanic to me mechanics to mechanics, it's all going to be pretty similar. But understanding just a different somebody's different point of view on how to accomplish the same thing, right? Because we're not we're not reinventing the wheel here. It's it's, it's same swing it's been this way for years it's just tweaked a little bit nowadays right but if you're able to hear somebody's viewpoint you you you, you may catch on to something that somebody says versus what i what i said and sure. that's why coach yeah. to coach and how that they they learn right i'm a very visual learner right i need to see it done in front of me and if i see it done in front of me i can kind of copy it some people need me to explain it to them more in detail some people are super analytic and it's just the way that how you're 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 translating that information you know i always kind of explain it like this it's like you'll come in for a lesson i need you to get one particular point so i'll have a rolodex of the way that i say it right, right. and i i don't stay on it too long i'll try it that didn't work, we go to the next way. That didn't got work, it, we yeah. go to the next yeah. way. Maybe eight or ten in, it finally clicks and you go, I got what you were trying to say. And you're like, man, if you would have told me that first, <laughs> I would have been a lot further along by now. And I'm like, but I did yeah. eight different times. It just took this way for you to understand it, right? Got it. Yeah, I noticed how, how you teach the game, and I've mentioned this in videos before. It's like, you know, you find... The deficiencies in someone's swing where it's not to where you're it's not fitting in the methodology you teach and you definitely give multiple options to try to get to that position so i do like that you know like if, you, it's a, if it doesn't click once you know you could try a different way to, to do it and then try to communicate it in a different way to make it click which i feel like sometimes you know that's lacking in maybe other other places where I've received lessons. So I do appreciate that about your teaching style. And, and I think one of the things too is I'm a big fan of it. If it if it if we don't need to change it, let's not change it, mm, right? Okay. There, swing your swing, right? I, I'm I'm. Mm. If you're in your mid 30s and you're trying to play golf and and you want to get to a low handicap, well, let's get you a low handicap. I, I'm not building building a tour player golf swing. If there's a little move that you make, but you make it the same way every single time, yeah. Then we can adjust 
to that move and still make a great move. It's It may not look as perfect as you think it's going to look, but it's going to be something that I know that you can repeat mm. over and over and over again. For right? sure, for sure. So, and I, I'm, I, I like to be very simplistic as what I'm doing. The, the, the fewest movements, you know, as possible. Got it, got it. So, pivoting back then, like for golfers who are just starting out, like in your mind then, what's the ideal and like a realistic cadence for a beginner what's the ideal time to get a lesson and then what's the expectation of like practicing after that lesson and then the follow-up so what what do you expect from a beginner golfer maybe like a checklist or two uh, when they first come in and then what should they do after the fact to get it to stick well it, it kind of depends like if you're if you're wanting to learn how to hit a golf ball you're wanting to learn how to how to play golf Th- those are two different things, true, right? True. And I'll give you an example. I had, a, I had a student a ways back, and he was like a plus 3.8. The guy was f- phenomenal, right? But he would sit on the range trying to perfect, almost over, prote- over um, perfect a certain part of his game okay. versus going out and playing golf. Like this scoring is, on a This course. is not a prettiest golf swing contest, right? Mm-hmm. This is how do I get the ball from A to B. Eventually, you have to go out and play golf he would get mad because we would play and his golf swing looked three times as good as mine but i would beat him (laughs) just about every time that we came out okay so what i hit in the trees well i hit that low hooded seven iron that goes seven feet off the ground it's recovery it is it is how you're creative to get the ball from from point a to point b right so when you are practicing if you're learning if you're saying i want to learn how to play golf it's always three to one short game Mm. putting chipping Yeah. Three times the amount of time, right? You know, a lot of people don't understand that, like, look, if you shot 100, 50 of those shots are with your pitching wedge and down. Mm. So those are the ones that we need to get good at. It always cracks me up. I see people come in here and they get a thousand dollar putter and a tw- or a thousand dollar driver and a twelve dollar putter, right? <laughs> use that driver fourteen times if you're lucky. Your putter, you're going to use it thirty six times, like yeah, bare yeah, minimum yeah. for a beginner. Yeah, yeah. Right. So spend some time and learn how to do that because it doesn't matter if you hit it three hundred yards or three feet; it's still one stroke. Got it. Got it. So yeah, basically, like, definitely a difference between scoring on a course and then even developing a swing to play on the course. And so, like, after that first lesson, just say, I, like, I'm brand new beginner. I get my first lesson with you, and you said, like. You, you how like how much practice in between the second lesson you think like oh at least f- five range session times I'm generally in every two week if you have time to every okay. th- to every three weeks right got it, got now it. like I don't like to see um, my students struggle or get frustrated I take that sort of personally so. I have a lot of them just say, I just say, look, send me a video if you're out there and you're struggling and I can at least say, hey, remember when we did this Mm. or work this drill we were working on because I need you to accomplish this, right? Because it is, golf is, it's very difficult and and you need to have somebody that's going to, regardless of it's me or wherever, somebody that's going to have your back with your, with your swing, right? It's just not, hey, you paid for your hour and next time you pay for your hour, I'll give you some more information. I'm, I'm truly here to see you get better. Yeah, which I think is, I mean, it's been a great experience. I was going to share a little bit about my experience. Um, Definitely have seen the swing become more consistent, but I think now it's more on-course stuff for me, Uh, like in scoring and then, you know, putting my swing to work and not getting strokes from that 100 100 yards in. So uh, definitely can attest to the lessons here. Um, I guess another question or another topic I wanted to cover then is how has given, because you've given lessons I, want, I don't want to say in two eras. I don't want to age you here. <laughs> but you've given lessons in the time of pre and post data availability, like with the TrackMan. So what are some of you know the biggest differences you see now than, than back then with this TrackMan data and even a setup here like at the golf garage? It's, it's night and day difference. And we, we talked about this a little bit in the last um, episode, but back and I hate to say back in my day but seriously <laughs> back in my day like you know my, my dad would be like here put this newspaper under your left arm and swing away right and and that's what would happen I'd try to stay connected I'd swing as hard as I could and you know let's hit the ball that way right but even taking lessons you know I'm I'm making a change 
And I always say what it looks like and what it feels like with your golf swing is completely different. Oh, yeah. Right? 100%. You, th you think you're in one position. You are not in that position. Yeah. Right? So you may be grooving something that you think is correct that is not correct. Right. So having that video data to back that up. Right. And then having the swing data to know, well, if I do shorten my swing and I do it the correct way, I actually my ball speed goes up. Right. Mm -hmm. Or my dispersion rate goes goes, you know, in a little bit because now I'm not losing the face, you know, enough or, or just losing the face in general. Um, but I think that's the one of the biggest difference. And again, eyesight and, and ability to see exact launch angles and measure those launch angles up against ball speed and, and, and face angles and say, look, like I know all I need to do is change this. Right. If my ball speed is this and my launch angle is this. Well, if I make my launch angle here, mm. then my carry yardage with the same ball speed is going to be so much further. Right. And we can we can tweak it that way, which really, really adds on some some yardage. Right. And then once you understand, you know, kind of how to pivot through the ball and understanding that we're we're squaring the, the, the golf club with the pivot versus the hands, then golf is going to get a, a whole lot easier. And that's the it's the toughest thing to get because, you know, we, we get to the top of our swing and there's a little voice in our head. This, I got to <laughs> oh, hit yeah. it. It's got to go. I got to oh, yeah. go right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've got to be patient and understand, like, if I turn, eventually the club's going to get to the ball. Yeah. So so before when you were teaching without you know, having access to stuff like what TrackMan provides, it was more like, you know, more just visual and then you telling them like, hey, you're doing it, you're not doing it, but you can't really yeah. prove it really. Right? Exactly. You had to trust me mm. that I was doing the right thing for you. Right. And then some people will not trust. Hey, it didn't work out or I didn't hit the ball like I thought I would after, you know, three or four lessons. Right. Versus here, I can say, look, here's where you're starting. Mm. Here's where I want to get you. And then within 10 swings, I force you to get to that spot. And then you can go, oh, I, I did it. <laughs> yeah, and look yeah. at look at the difference in the numbers. My, you know, my my swing plane, you know, um, was two degrees from the inside and my face angle was square, right? Like you can see that and you can, you can see the effect of what the, what the data is and what the ball flight is. But I think the biggest thing too, when you're practicing is understanding what the data says and what it feels like. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I think, this is the way that my club, this is the way my swing should feel, but the data shows something different. And then I do this uncomfortable swing where the data comes out great. And I keep making that uncomfortable swing and the data comes out great. Well, then I understand now that this is the feeling I need to have uh, to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. God, right. God. Cause comfortable doesn't always, yeah. Yeah. Comfortable yeah. doesn't always work. Yeah. Golf is uh, definitely one that puts your body in positions yeah. that, Sometimes aren't the best for you. <laughs> well, one one of my one of my favorite stories is I was taken um, when in order to teach to learn how to teach golf because um, the PGA of America they're great and all but they don't teach you how to teach. Right. They, right, they, sure, they teach sure. you how to run a business. Yeah. 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 So you got to go learn go learn how to teach on your own, especially again back in my day 20 years ago right so i would go to all the top instructors in the state of washington and i'd say give me a lesson and then i would ask them beforehand is it okay if i just shadow you and like take some notes and you know just look absorb as much knowledge as i as i could and i remember saying i think he was like the second ranked teacher in the state and um can't remember his name off the top of my head it was so long ago but great instructor uh but he wanted to make a grip change Right. And, okay. and I get up there and, and I'm hitting golf balls and, and I made the mistake of saying, wow, this feels really uncomfortable. Right? <laughs> OK. And he looks at me and he goes, kid, if comfortable was working for you, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I was like, yes, sir. Let me get back to that. Yeah, change now, okay. right? yeah. So it is. It's about making your body feel like you're going to do some uncomfortable stuff. You're going to be like, oh, I've never gotten to that position before. Right. And, and there's so much that, that people think I can't do that. My body doesn't bend that way. Would well, you realize it, 
it really does it really does you can be yes being flexible helps but there's you can still make a good solid turn mm. you know whether you're six foot tall and 160 pounds or five foot ten and 240 pounds right it's it's going to be you know the same motion essentially mm -hmm. right you know I, I find that um Taller golfers will tend to kind of want to move back and forth, okay. right? Where, you know, the, the lower body wants to kick out quicker, right? All where, right, right yeah, yeah. where shorter, more stockier people um, are moving around their body more. Right. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and that's why you know I was actually actually uh, you know was having a conversation with Drew when he was here and he was talking about kids learning and he brought up a great point you know and again once again it's learning from everybody right yeah 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 and um, he was talking about his instructor Dana um, talking about children learning and when they're learning from a younger age they generally have a club that's probably a little bit longer than what they should have but right, it works right. out great because it makes them swing around their body uh, versus somebody who takes it up later and they have that very much attack motion where it goes straight up and down yeah, they no dump all yeah they dump all the angles their right arms doing this in the, in the in the downswing right so that in itself it's just like you just go like a light bulb went off in my head i was like yeah and that's why like i have like a like a seven or ten foot pole <laughs> yeah, over there pole the back, that yeah. I force people to swing to have that understanding of around versus as more up and down. Got it. So I guess the next question would be: so if I were a beginner looking for lessons, then I would, me personally, if I suggest anyone to get lessons, go to. I mean, if you, if you maybe come here or wherever, I would go to a place for sure that had at least a TrackMan or a GC Quad or whatever to give you data, you, right? You, it, you just learn faster with the data. There's no, no. Don't get me wrong. There's some phenomenal instructors sure. out there yeah, yeah. that can get you to where you want to be without it. I just think it's a little bit easier with it. You get to build. You, it's validating what your coach is telling you to do because you can see the end result, right? right and right, right. that, and that instills trust in the move, right? If you can see. Let's say you're a person that says, my body doesn't get there. And then three swings later, I'm like, ha ha, there you go. <laughs> right? It does yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, oh, man, I can make that move. And then now I understand what that feels like. And I can go out to repeat that. Now I'm trusting what I'm doing versus me just telling you and then you you – Trusting me without ever seeing it done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, okay. and, and, and again, I know there's a book about it, but golf is a game of confidence, right? It is mm -hmm. how do you, how do you, like, because there's certain rounds, and in, in even even me, like, I days that I feel like I have it, you can swing as hard as you want, the ball just goes dead straight. Yeah. And other days I get to the top and I'm like, where's the club at? Right? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah. be a long day and you're going to have to manufacture something when you're out there. And that's a good topic right there is understanding you got to you have to have a stock move that if you're struggling this is going to be the move. Oh, yeah, for right? sure, for sure. Yeah, that's something we can definitely touch on. Um so maybe it's not maybe not a place with a track man, but I think it's very important to be able to see yourself swing. Right. Vi video at the very least. Video at the very yeah. least. Yeah, like unless you're like a Butch Harmon who probably could yeah. just tell pros, you know, yeah, just do this this and this. I feel like if you're a beginner a place that has video would, is so, or at least recording, and, and you need to be able to record your own swing at the range too. I think that's like a huge feedback tool. But yeah, I think you should look for places that have video. And, and, I, and I think when, when people are recording their swings, especially when they're sending them into their coaches, understanding where to record it from. Okay, that's a good because point. Because if you change that angle, it looks different, oh. right? I may think you're shallow and you're not shallow. I may think you're steep and you're not steep just from the angle that that camera's at, especially if it's sitting too low. Right? Uh, you, always, so, you always want it around hand height. Okay, so yeah. like my arms are hanging down yeah. and around there. Yeah, around hand height. Okay, hand yeah. height. So, uh, you know, down the line or front facing? Down the line and front facing. Both? Okay, yeah. got it. Right. So like if you were to suggest, hey, if you want to record your swing, I didn't really think about that. That super matters if you're sending it somewhere for feedback, like the location in which you're filming as well. So that's a good tip. Um, so... Yeah, I think, you know, what you got going here, like I said, the Golf Garage San Jose, check it out, is, is really cool. Um, I guess, did you have, when you initially taught 
uh, lessons in you know the Washington area. Did you have what? Did you have any of this, or was uh, it just? I was always trying to do something different, right? Okay. I had the V1 software when it first came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember spending a boatload of money where what felt like a boatload of money. I can't even remember what it was called, but it it attached to the back of your golf club, and then it gave a 3D. Um, motion capture of what your golf club did and how uh, it rotated uh, in the swing. Interesting, interesting. But I would have to bring out my laptop. I'd have to get everything set up. Like it was, it was a struggle, right? Mm. And then kind of matching that with the video, and you find that getting everything set up and utilizing it. I spent more time doing that, where it just became, became more of a value not to utilize that sort of data. I still would use a lot of video just to have that trust factor of, hey, this is what I'm getting you to do, or here's where you're starting, and here's where our end position needs to be. God. Okay. So I mean, yeah, yeah that's that's interesting to hear where where it started and now where it's yeah. you know and, where and, it's and, at. And, and I do think I do think that you're going to get a handheld unit that's going to be as good as TrackMan. It's going to come. Oh, yeah. Know? Like they, you know, they have or they're releasing a ton of products to where, you know, you can get club data in like a three to four thousand dollar unit, which that's incredible. You know, like it, it won't be as accurate, but the fact that they're developing stuff like that is pretty cool. And what what is it out there that's now? I can't remember. I don't know the name of it right off the top of my head, but I had another coach bring it in and, and where he just put me on his phone and it came up in the video caption and it went to that um, like a AI. Oh, sports yeah. box. Yes, AI the sports. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that is incre it's incredible. You didn't need to set anything up. You didn't need to do anything. Oh, you just wow. literally, you, and you took one video of my swing from a face on angle and it now translated to above behind on the down the line Oof. had all tilts all angles and i was like phenomenal man the technology is definitely yeah. definitely changing I okay. th and then that's going to be something that we're going to add to the garage i want to bring on that you know just so people can see it i want to do i also want to bring in a um a pressure mat as well so oh, like i think that's your, a, yeah. i think it's like that's in, a Chris incredibly uh, important Chris Combe? Yeah. Or Kuma or whatever, he is big on that with yeah. the down down force, ground, ground, ground force, and, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can you can see, and you know, one of the first things that I tell people like there's there's not a sport out there where your energy is going the opposite direction of where your ball is going to go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty you much know? right. Yeah, like everything's got to be going in, in the same direction, and right, the golf is one of the things like their energy is going backwards, and they're trying to hit the ball forwards. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, so yeah, kind of touched base on you know when ideally you should get your first lesson, and then the expectations if you get that first lesson, you know you definitely have to practice it before. I mean, and it's funny, like yeah, you feel guilty of people. I mean, do you experience that then? People get oh, yeah. a lesson, they don't do anything, and they come back and they get another lesson. Yeah, or, or they'll come in. They'll even come in two weeks later. I'm like, hey, how much practice you got? None. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what we can do, right? Like you got you got to get out there. And that's going to be like it is upon me to give you the information and guide you to do what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And if you whoever you choose, whatever system, whoever whatever system they're they're teaching, right? Trust it 100%. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're just it's it's not going to work out for you, right? If you're constantly jumping and looking for that that magic move, right, or that one little thing that's going to take you, you've already you've been given the information for it. It's just about now putting in the work. It right, takes right, right. it takes so many golf balls in order to make it where it's just automatic. You don't get into your car and say, "I need to now hit my blinker." I need to now put my left foot on the brake. Mm -hmm. You just do it. Next yeah. thing you know, you're home, right? Same thing with a golf swing. This is a reaction. If you're mm -hmm. up in the top of your swing and you're worried about where your elbow is, you've already lost, right? <laughs> Fair but enough. That's yeah. what happens, right? So, so one of the like, and, and just a little tip for people who are playing: like, draw an imaginary line four feet behind your ball, right? When you're out on the golf okay. course, whatever you do behind that four feet line is very kind of you're looking at positions right my elbow needs to be here and he needs to be here this is what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. the minute you cross that four foot line now it's focusing on shot shape in about this much of the bottom i'm holding up my fingers for about an inch here the bottom of whatever your your aiming point is i want your focus so small 
that if you miss it by five yards, five yards left, you're still in the fairway. If you just aim for the fairway and you miss it by a three foot left or three feet right, you still missed the fairway. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. So you want all you're looking is now it's it's visualization, right? But if you're getting up and you're going like, oh, I'm trying to do this, like it, it generally, it may work out a little bit, but like in order for you to get in that zone where you're just you know what it's going to happen you're you're picking a shot and then hey there's a good percentage of chance that you're going to you're going to you're going to accomplish what you want to accomplish to a certain degree right? yeah and that's when that's when golf becomes fun right yeah i think that that's a good point instead of like you know and the people preach this all the time don't work on your swing on on the course right and unfortunately you know golf is so hard that you know, it's not easy to where it can become like your blinkers in your car or your brakes and your gas in your car, just to go up and just sweep and you, it like and, that. And that's you know? where playing golf is. Once you've learned it, go out and utilize it because, you know, even even in the garage, I love the mat. We got a good mat here, but if I if somebody comes in and they hit a ball and and it bottoms out an inch and a half before it hits the ball that club's going to skid across the turf and they're going to hit it and they're going to think to themselves, great shot, right? <laughs> that wasn't too terrible. Yeah, but yeah. if you do that on a hard pan lie, right, that it's not going to, it's not going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to, you know, if it's soft, you know, fairways, you're going to lay some sod over it. Like you're going to, it doesn't work out well. So, so go out, play nine holes in the evening, walk, drop three or four balls, keep hitting different shots, work on your feels that way. So when you, when you do go out and play with your buddies, it's just going out and having a good time and manage, manage your expectation, right? Right. My, right. my, my, my manager expectation. So, uh, before my child was born and my son is, is 19 now, you know, I would, uh, you know, I'd get to the course bare minimum an hour and a half early, and I'm going through all of my warm up mm -hmm. routines, and I've got my putting routines, I got my chipping routines, and I'm hitting my golf balls, getting warm up, and I'm thinking I want to shoot something that starts with a six, right? So my son was born, and then it was like get him to the sitter, uh, get <laughs> get there five minutes before you tee off. Uh, I took two two putts. I hit one driver on the range, and I get up, and I have the same expectation to shoot something that starts with a six, and mm. then I get mad when I don't, right? So you really gotta you gotta manage that expectation, and 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 forget about forget about the bad. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a huge golf is so mental. It's it's crazy. Like, and I think a lot of people it's hard for them to uh, manage expectations because not being good at golf sometimes is not very fun <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah but like hey you know if you're expecting to not be that great because you know you haven't put the time in or you put the practice to get to that you know kind of like zone swing that should be the you, you know can't be too surprised yeah. well and, that, and that's if, if if hogan can play 18 holes of golf and say he hit two shots that went where he went that wanted them to how do i expect that i'm going to do yeah. any any better than that right yeah, yeah, yeah. so it is how do you manage the, the the bad swings right so recently you know i one of my students was playing in a, a tournament at uh, um, pacific grove okay. right yeah, yeah and and before we tee off you know, I, I explained to her, I was like, look, um, that's how it's going to work. You're going to hit three shots today. They're going to completely be disastrous. All They're right. not anything that you <laughs> wanted to hit. They're not going to go online. They're going to be bad. You're probably going to be a little bit embarrassed, right? But if we plan for them, it doesn't hurt so much when they get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And she did. She hit a bad shot. She was like, there's one of them. Right. And then we just moved on. We recovered. We took our lump. That was it, right? Wow. And when you do that, it you don't hold on to that negative energy for three holes, right? It's it's how you how you map out the game. You know, um, my main instructor was Shane Flannery. Um, he used to play on the Nike Tour way back when, and and he taught me that I would break up my scorecard 
into three whole segments. Okay. Right? Because a lot of the times what happens, you get three holes in, you went double, double, triple, and you're like, I'm going to turn it around at the turn. <laughs> that back nine is going to be great. Well, you still had five holes to go, <laughs> right? You still had five or six holes that you can go yeah, out there yeah. and play good golf. But you didn't because you're mentally saying, I'm waiting for the back nine to turn it on. Right. So if I if I map it out into three whole segments and I go, look, I got I got two par fours and a par five bare minimum. I want to be one under. I should take advantage of that par five. Right. I've got a par three and two par fours. That's a tough par four. and That's a tough par three. Hopefully I'm going to I'm going to write down. I'm going to be even. Right. Mm. And I judge myself on those three holes. And if I screw up those three holes, I got another three holes. Right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, mentally, I'm keeping myself in it without like that huge blow up, and then I just give up until I get to the tenth, to the tenth hole. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, shoot, that could be a whole you know episode itself is basically the scoring aspect. You know, the mental fortitude that is required to play the game is obviously very high. But then, what are the tips and tricks? Like you know how you said your student that you were you know caddying for like giving that expectation you're going to blow up on three shots and to just completely forget about that. I think, you know, those are kind of the things for a beginner that, you know, on top of, you know, trying to just learn how to swing a golf club and then getting out there on the course. But like, there's so many things that they don't, beginners don't know because they're just trying to get, you know, to the hole that that would be very beneficial. So that's something we can maybe explore. You know, and I think it's something that kind of, I don't want to say hurts golf or whatever, but you watch a tournament and they are showing you the best people in the world oh, and yeah. they're showing you their best shots. You know what I love to see? I love to see Henrik Stenson top of three wood, right? I, <laughs> I love to see Molinari top it off the first yeah, hole yeah. at Pebble. Like those are like, oh, you're, you're, you're like, you're, you're mortal, yeah. right? You, you make mistakes two it's just they recover better than we recover yeah yeah absolutely it, it, they're like one of us or yeah whatever, it, you know, it one is of us. It's, it's identifiable to be like oh you don't hit every shot perfect yeah right yeah, if yeah. not people be shooting 58 59 every time out yeah and even the pros you know they have their struggles too so it really puts the game in perspective so you know uh bringing it back like as a beginner yeah you know if you have that passion for it if you're willing i i feel like you, you need to be willing to put it in the practice time like there's no getting around that unless you're insanely athletic and gifted which is even, probably not. even if you are you still got to put in the work yeah you still got to you still got to put in the work yeah right? so like that's kind of where i see like my friend james he's putting a lot of work he he likes to go to the range i think he likes tinkering a little bit too much with the like the information available to make it stick uh, rather than getting some guidance from you know a, a teaching professional, but yeah, he's put a lot of time, and we kind of like fast tracked him to on the course because not only did we you know have him learn a swing that is playable, but then we taught him all the other intricacies of the game, like playing quickly, not backing up traffic. Oh yeah, if you you know launch it out of bounds or don't take ten shots off the tee, just come up with us and drop, you know, and just come to the fairway or whatever. So you know we kind of fast tracked him on on route to play like 18 holes and we're kind of throwing them on these courses <laughs> that are like probably shouldn't be on these courses but you know we kind of taught them you know the other unspoken rules to get along and so it's been a great time and there's so many unspoken rules you oh. know about shadows and where to stand oh and, gosh and one yeah. of them i see nowadays that everybody does that i and i feel bad having to ask somebody but like don't stand directly behind me oh yeah don't stand directly behind me yeah Step off to an you angle. Can see in your peripherals I'm just, in I'm seeing it, and and it's just, you know, in in shadows moving when you're putting, and it's like, you know, but to me, it's like, it, it's like I'm not playing tournament golf, so I'm not gonna, it's not gonna bother me too much. But still, you, I want to make sure that when I'm playing with somebody, that you know, I'm pulling a pin, I'm marking yeah. my ball, I'm fixing my ball marks, I'm doing all of the stuff to to just make the game better for everybody behind me and enjoyable for the group I'm with yeah absolutely like I think maybe that'll be the last thing we touch on there's just so many unspoken rules um, that you kind of had learned organically through the game like as itself but I think with this new wave of pandemic golf some of those had you know gone to the wayside because of all the restrictions and stuff and you got this huge influx of new golfers that are coming in and, and to nobody's fault. I mean, they didn't really have anyone teach them or anything that aren't telling them those kind of, you know, unspoken rules. So like, you know, fix your ball mark on the green or don't walk on a person's line. Right. 
when yeah. they're putting. You know, don't mess up. You know, don't put a footprint <laughs> where their ball is going to roll over. Or you know, like uh, just you know, pick up if you're falling way far behind, kind of thing. So, um, any any like other than the standing behind, like what are what are like some top top two most important unspoken rules, I guess, for you. Um, for me, it's where you stand on the putting green as well. Okay. Right. Be out of somebody's immediate view. Right. You know, because I know you're trying to, um, you know, take a peek at the line. You know, you may stand 10 feet to the left or 10 feet to the right. And the minute they putt, then you can kind of step behind them real quick and try to, mm, to okay. gain. Because you're always looking for information right i i don't know i don't maybe i don't feel like it's going to break one way let me look at what his ball does but just sure. make sure you're cur- you're courteous to where your shadow's not in their line your, your shadow's not moving behind them that it's just it's just still right because uh, putting is you, you know it takes a lot of focus oh yeah definitely definitely yeah and and on on the course it's just going to be you know if you're ahead just be ahead and on the side Right. I don't want to have you moving and doing all this stuff. And then especially if you're not very good of a golfer, I'd be like, well, what if I do, you know, <laughs> yeah. sh- shank one right and, you know. You're right, um, right. Yeah. So if you do move ahead, don't be like somewhere where my ball has a slight chance, yeah. even a slight chance to in, go. And in, in coming from a background of somebody who ran golf courses for, for years is please, please don't drive next to the greens. Right. Keep, right. Keep, yeah. your, keep your card away from like. You know, yeah, you, can, keep, you you can walk twelve steps. It's really not that difficult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. Golf carts near yeah, the green. It's it's. Sometimes I see a, private yeah. clubs, and then you can see those guys like a whoop right up to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So those are your your couple of things. Yeah, I think for me, it's more like, um, I think pace of play is becoming ever more important right now, um, and so if you are struggling, you know there are ways to play bad golf still at a decent pace. Like, and there shouldn't be no reason why your group collectively isn't like, if you don't see the people on the green in front of you, especially in these days, like, then just pick it up a little bit. I think that's, everyone can agree on that, you know, like. You can be terrible, but be fast. Yeah, you can be really bad at golf, shoot 120 or whatever, and still play a four, four, four hour round walking. Like, you know, if, because you hit your three wood 275 once doesn't mean that you need to wait for the par five green to clear every time you've got 285 yards left in. Right? <laughs> yeah. But that's what happens. You know, you right. see a guy, they're holding stuff up, and next thing you know, he's like 125 yards down the fairway. Exactly. Right? So, like, And it's all fun. Like, you want to go for it. It's reachable, whatever. Go, go. Like, I'm I'm one to say, hit, hit it as hard as you can. Like, right? Like, with balance. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I'm one where... I'm going to teach you the move and then we're going to do it softly and then a little bit harder and a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And then I want you to do it like overly hard just to <laughs> see how your body reacts to that. Yeah, right? yeah, what yeah. happens to I, if I need to step on one? What's my mistake? Right. You know, and you'll find tendencies of, you know, what happens when I'm trying to do a half shot versus a full shot versus I'm, I need to step on one. This one, you know, like I have, uh, you know, one of my students, same to an academy for, she generally has a habit of the half, like she's trying to dial down a pitching wedge. And I know generally it's going to go five yards left. She just gets a, a mm. hair fast. Right. See, so yeah. Once you understand those tendencies about yourself, you can kind of calculate for it. Know what side of the green to miss. You don't have to go at every pin. Yeah. That's yeah. how you're going to miss a lot of greens. For sure. The, the goal of this game is hit it to 15 feet. That's what I tell, that's what I tell all my like, better players. Our, we want to play boring golf. Like, down the fairway, on the green, let's hit it to 15 feet or less. If I do that all day, I'm going to make four or five putts. Oh, yeah. For sure, that's a good that's a good mantra and methodology to go by on the. No, nah, I wish I could do that more <laughs> yeah, often. Wish we could all do that. Easier said than done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's something we should all strive for. So okay, hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is the next our next episode uh, in the series of hopefully more of these. Um, so yeah, keep chasing, and we'll see you in the next one.